Hey everyone, it's Greg Narayan from DearBlogger.org and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to build this exact WordPress website that I think is ideal for your business or personal needs in 2015. This website will be built without any coding whatsoever. You won't need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, C, C++, Python, Ajax, or any other weird languages. All you'll need to know to build this entire website is how to follow directions from the comfort of home on your screen. We're going to build our website obviously on WordPress.org CMS, which stands for Content Management System, and it's the world's best. It's the exact same one used by New York Times, CNN, Forbes, Sony, Katy Perry, Rolling Stones, and the list really goes on. Because it's a website, I've chosen a specific theme which I think contains elements and designs that will make your site look like a website and not a blog, and that theme is called Vantage. It's one of the most popular and one of the most highly rated WordPress themes on the market today. Finally, because this is built for 2015 and beyond, I've chosen specific design elements and simple WordPress features that I think will be ideal for your success in the present time. We'll talk about all that in a second, but why don't we go through a quick website tour to make sure this is exactly what we want, and then we'll talk about the steps we must take, like set up a domain name and hosting, how much they'll all cost, and then we can dive in and get started. What do you say? Also, I want you to know that unlike other tutorials, I'm not just going to build something halfway for you and leave you with a piece of software, a bunch of tacky terms, and a bunch of fluff that you don't understand. I'm here to help, and I'll be around in the comments whether you want to just understand one term or learn about something like how to get more traffic to your website or how to make revenue from it. I'm happy to help with it all. I've done it myself, and I really take pleasure in explaining stuff like this for you. Alright, now let's get started. So let me take you through a quick website tour and we'll look at all the features we're going to learn how to make after our WordPress installation on our domain name. Alright, so starting at the top, we're going to learn how to custom design a logo and I really spend time looking at which logos and styles are standing out and working nowadays. So we're going to learn some graphic design along with how to make a WordPress website. We'll see how to put a call to action phone number over here and a navigation menu right below our logo. That also includes a search bar. Then we'll learn how to make this beautiful full screen image slider that could contain as many images as you want and text and links and that sort of stuff. Moving down, we'll learn how to make featured icons. So I'm not sure if you've seen on Facebook or maybe on Twitter or on major sites when you're just on the home page, you'll usually see these icons nowadays. People, I guess scientifically or according to some study, relate to icons. So I'll show you how to get icons and how to put them on your site. And it seems like a good way to tell people what you're all about in sort of a aesthetically pleasing manner. We're gonna learn how to set up this call to action area where you could include a phone number or maybe some text like make a greeting card with us or make a table with us or learn finance or learn gardening with us or or whatever you're selling on the web moving down even more we're gonna learn how to embed a video that could be about yourself maybe an about me video or about your services or maybe just any goofy video of your kids or your pets or something like that we'll learn how to put a video on the site this can really go anywhere, but I think it looks good on the home page, and we'll put some text right next to it to the right. And that does it for the home page. But generally, I want you to feel comfortable adding images and icons and links and text around a website. So you'll know how to do all that. On the contact page, you'll see that we're going to set up a contact form and this can be used to easily contact the owner of the website. Um, in this case that would be you or whoever is running the website and it's pretty good for you know saying hello something like that without actually displaying your email to the public one of your users can click send and it'll say message was sent and then that'll actually just go right through to your email inbox so we could check that out just by refreshing we get our message from the site 
So that's just a standard feature, nothing special for 2015, but one of the staple website features that you should know how to set up will handle that. Last but not least, I'm going to show you how to set up a Google ad which can help you earn revenue and this sort of ad earns revenue from page views when people view it and it also earns revenue more importantly through clicks so I'll show you how to become an AdSense Google AdSense publisher how to easily display your ads and how to learn sorry rather how to earn a bit of spare change from the website while you're doing uh, whatever it is you're doing so that can be really fun and it really can add up I personally earn a paycheck every month from Google and it's really pretty rewarding to earn a bit of money for all the time that you spend uh, building a website and helping people online. And I personally just reinvest it back into my business but every cent helps. This website that we're building is also mobile friendly and mobile responsive. That doesn't mean we have to do any more work, it's actually just the theme that we've chosen. It's a responsive theme. And we can test that by pulling the corner of your browser in and that way we can see how the site might look on a tablet for example. We can see the phone number has moved and the logo has shifted and the sliders resized perfectly. The icons are now stacked vertically and the video is centered perfectly. Or we could pull it in further and see how the site might look on an iPhone or an Android or any mobile device. So no matter what screen your visitors, your audience is using, your website will look good. Just another WordPress skill that you can add to your skill set when we're done. We are also going to learn the back end of WordPress um, as we build our WordPress website. I want you to understand these words, plugins, widgets. What does this all mean? What are they used for? Why are they called what they're called? So I want you to understand as much as possible about WordPress, have confidence, and you should know that you can always post a comment and I'll explain literally anything. This website took me about an hour to make, start to finish, but we're going to try to do that in about half the time here, so I'm confident we can do it, and uh, yeah, just post a comment or stop the video if anything doesn't make sense. I'd rather have you ask a question than just wonder forever why we did something or how something in WordPress works. Alright, that was our website tour. Next I've made us a little to-do list of the five steps that we need to take to build a WordPress website from start to finish. So let's go through these and I'll also mention the prices right now because I know that's going to be really important for a lot of us new website owners. So the first thing we need to tie down is our domain name. That's going to be your unique.com. So it'll look like your website.com or .net or .org. All of these are the same in Google's eyes. One of them's not going to be better for search engine optimization if that was one of your questions. But depending on your brand and the website branding, you're going to have to put some thought into this. The dot coms are the most universal and often the most expensive, although you might get lucky and find the perfect dot com and then the world will just be in good shape, really. Dot coms, dot nets, dot orgs, domain names, these cost about $13 per year. That's an annual cost. And it's something I pay. I actually pay for about 20 different domain names right now, so, you know, one domain name, 13 a year, really no big deal. Next up is web hosting. Web hosting is basically like a home for your blog um, or a parking space, something like that. We're going to be getting our own web hosting and it's going to be really important to choose a good web host that's trusted and doesn't have downtime and really takes care of your content really well. So I personally like HostGator web hosting. We're going to go with them in this tutorial and we'll talk more about them in a second. So web hosting is our home we're going to use HostGator.com. They're actually the largest web host as well. And it's going to cost us about $7 per month. That's a monthly cost, all right? As a part of this tutorial, though, I'm going to show you how to get this cost down to just one cent. We're going to learn how to get one cent web hosting in our first month. Once we have our domain name and our web hosting registered and working together, then we can install WordPress onto the domain name and hosting. And this part is free. WordPress is free open source software 
and that just means that there are thousands of awesome developers around the world working on it and improving it and improving our experience at all times. And who knows, maybe you'll become one of those people someday. Once we install the WordPress.org software, we're going to go ahead and change the theme. So we're going to get a default theme at first. We're going to go ahead and change it to this theme called Vantage, which is free, thankfully. And when I say theme, uh, you should know that I'm referring to the look. So everything from this black navigation menu to the fact that the logo is off on the left and the phone number's on the right and the image slider is this big and this wide and really every little component like the shadings and the borders and the corners and the edges of the website, that's all the theme. I just want you to know mainly that the theme refers to the design or the template that your website is wearing and that you can choose from hundreds and really thousands of different themes that might suit your website. Once we have a good theme for ourselves, we can set up content and that's everything like the um, images and text and videos and links and icons and more. You should know that I'm going to help you set up your content in a way that's good for branding. All right, So maybe you visited sites before and there's a lot of good content but you can't really understand it or find it because it's disorganized. We're going to make sure we don't have that problem ever. All right, So our content is going to be well organized, well branded, and it's going to say good things about you when you get your first visitors on your website. All right, so all we're going to pay today is for the domain name and the web hosting. And if you watch this tutorial, you'll learn how to get the WordPress website total budget, so total bill or however you want to call it. Total bill will be $13. It'll actually be a little bit less, a few cents less, but that's with our domain name, which is 13 bucks. It's actually 12.95 and our one cent web hosting for one month. All right. I'll also show you a deal if you want to get a website for longer on how to get your um, web hosting at a discount of 30%. So whether you want to just try out a WordPress website or get a long-term website, I think this will be a perfect tutorial for you and I hope you really like it. All right. Because I know I've been on a budget before and not sure if what I was buying was the right stuff and I want you to have confidence that you're getting a good deal and that you're doing this all in really the cheapest way that I know possible. Alright, that does it for our walkthrough of the steps we must take in order to make a WordPress website. I hope you stick with us through all the steps or at least a few of them. And now it's going to be time to go get our domain name and our web hosting from HostGator.com. We're going to get them in the same place for the sake of simplicity. If you do want to use a different web host, that's fine. I hope these steps still work perfectly. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions on web hosting. And let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is going to be to head over to HostGator.com and we'll free up some of that tab space above. All right. HostGator is a really cool and easy to use company. They offer domain names um, which are just like HostGator.com or Google.com or Twitter.com. That's a domain name. And they offer hosting space, web hosting space, which is basically just some storage space um, online so when you upload a picture to Facebook or something, that all goes to a little bit of space. And we are going to control the space by using HostGator, and we're going to own it. So there's no risk that anyone can take our blog down once it starts earning good money. And so that we can use WordPress.org, just like those brands and celebrities we looked at earlier. So you need a domain name, and you need a bit of hosting space to use WordPress. Now you might have had the impression this was all really difficult or expensive and the good thing is it's neither of those anymore and we're going to install WordPress really easily but yeah that's just a little background on HostGator and they're also the largest host with 9 million uh, domain customers so we know that they're doing at least something right. Okay cool, lastly before we begin um, I like using the live chat sometimes HostGator has a really nice team 
a really large team of people that are paid to answer any question or solve any problem about the you know any part of the process so that's always an option alright so let's get these things taken care of we want to click on web hosting up here in the upper left and then uh, takes us to this page so there's a few options this plan is one domain it's super cheap and um, you know it gives us a lot of good features I like this plan in the middle because we can use unlimited domain names so if you set up this blog that's gonna you know start making money and then you realize you want to start up another blog like a sister website or start your friends blog or start a blog for your parents uh, like I've done something like that then this is a good plan because you get unlimited domain names um, this one's really only good if you're a business setting this up um, but also something to consider so we're gonna go on with the baby plan and I'm gonna go ahead and register it just for one month just so we can try it out uh, we can try out the domain name and the hosting and the WordPress and that's great once we select that I'm just gonna click order now and once we do that we're gonna be directed to the HostGator order wizard and now's the fun part we get to put in the domain name that we want so I'm just gonna write one in and the one I'm gonna choose is called Narai Guy which is uh, a nickname that one of my best friends gave me and it's good to generally control your your nickname.com or your name.com is another good option um, because then there's no confusion when someone visits the site over who's in charge of it um, so I actually already have that one then over here you can choose the extension as they call it so I like to get the .com if it's available it's the most recognizable you'll probably want that one too it's just a good um, a good one to have but there's nothing wrong with these they'll still operate the exact same way the search engine optimization and how Google sees them will still be the same it just might be a little different for your branding which is something to consider if you got a domain name already from GoDaddy or somewhere else you can just click right here and then proceed as normal so we're gonna register a new domain and it says congratulations so we'll move on we'll just scroll down and I want the baby plan at one month which is cool so just walking you through everything here don't need to get any any of these extras right now I, I don't want those and we're gonna need to choose some account information here and then I'll be entering this billing information in a second but let's show you all that's going on here now we usually want to uncheck all the hosting add-ons because they just add uh, you know unnecessary costs uh, that we don't need if you want them you know go for it but I like to keep this as cheap as possible and speaking of which right here um, so there's a coupon code that I know of that you can use uh, it's actually my code and you can see how snappy when that's in there it gives us a discount of four dollars and four cents which is pretty good but if you type in coffee money I'm a big coffee fanatic instead and then click validate you can see that that discount jumps up to eleven ninety nine and the reason it does so is because this gives us hosting for one penny one cent okay cool so you can see we get our hosting for one penny now and I really hope that discount helps if you were worried about the cost like I know I was at first and this domain name cost is pretty much something standard everyone pays for it um, when they start a website or a blog and they're serious about it so happy to pay for that so I think we're all set up just double check everything I'm going to use the PayPal option right here just because I like using PayPal. And then. So then we can click right here and we can click create account.
and we can close out of this and I'm gonna click pay now after we process the order with PayPal we'll be directed right back to HostGator and then we can proceed okay what happens after you make payment is you get this email right here that's from sales and has HostGator your account info in it so now that we have this we can open it up this email is really important you never want to delete it and you should probably store this info in uh, whatever sort of storage you find most convenient I like using a Google document but up to you the next thing is going to be to click on this link that says control panel but before you do that go ahead and copy this password and remember our username which is just our domain name without the com and we're basically gonna go and log into our control panel and it'll be just like any other sort of online registration you've done for any sort of program or service or software except for the fun edition that we'll be installing the web's hottest software as well which is WordPress so click right here and once you click there we can enter our username and then just paste our password right in and then we can click login alright okay cool the login was successful and welcome to your new dashboard at HostGator so congratulations really you have registered domain you've registered hosting and we have that all in our control so we're more than halfway done and I think we're also making good time which is great but take a quick spin around here um, when you get a moment I'll show you exactly what we want to do right now though which is scroll down to the software and services section and you want to click on quick install the little blue clock button alright so we can click that and once we click that we'll be brought over here and we want to click on WordPress just give that a click on the word and then just click continue alright great so the next step is going to be to install WordPress and I'll tell you what to type in right here right now so we want to leave this blank uh, some people like putting WordPress WordPress on something like uh, <laughs> like uh, you know their domain.com slash blog or you know WordPress but we're just gonna keep it simple uh, it's, that's what I recommend uh, let's put in an email and uh, this time we will not misspell it okay so once we install WordPress our WordPress login will be emailed here so double check that you got that right and our blog title which is just travel blog and then a user I'm just gonna go with first name and great you can really put anything here like admin or um, you know whatever you want you could put your first initial last name I'm just gonna go with first name and then hold on to your seats because we're now gonna install WordPress it's gonna go real quick so let's do it we'll just click install now and there we go congratulations our WordPress is now installed to a hundred percent onto our new HostGator hosting and our domain name alright I'm just gonna pull up our checklist now to see where we're at in the process we have registered a domain name we have set up web hosting at HostGator. We've installed WordPress, that's what we just did. And now it's time to log into WordPress and then start our theme process, get a new look, and then we can go ahead and set up our content and move on from there. So why don't we go and check out our new WordPress site? We can close quick install because that will also be emailed to us and if you open up your new WordPress email we get a login link and a username and a password 
and this password is really crummy but we have to use it now to log in so we'll copy it and then you can just click your admin area link alright once you do that it will open in a new browser window and the link gets a bunch of other funny details added onto it that's fine that's just WordPress bringing us to the login page I recommend bookmarking your login link so at any time if you want to log in it's just your domain name dot com slash WP dash admin and you can add that manually to bookmarks or you can just bookmark this whole thing done alright let's log in for the first time and check it out got my username password pasted in and then we can click the blue login button and here we are our very brand new dashboard if you click on this travel blog button up in the upper left probably say something different for your blog that's just the title I chose on mine for some reason then it'll take us to the home page of the theme the default theme that you get for WordPress and um, even though we're building this in 2015 it has given us the 2014 theme which is interesting I guess WordPress is still displaying the 2014 theme by default but let's go ahead and look at the 2015 theme even though we're not going to use it so we can click back to the dashboard by clicking this upper left hand corner dashboard is of course where you'll do all your editing and change the appearance and set up all the different features of the site for starters, I want us to go to Appearance and Themes. Once we're in Themes, we can try out any sort of new look that came pre-installed like 2015. To do so, we can just click Activate. <clears throat> and now let's check out this site again. So as easy as pie, we just changed the whole look of the site. And this is in fact the default 2015 theme. This is what the WordPress developers have built for us. And you might want to use it for a bit or play around with it. But word to the wise, thousands of WordPress sites start every day and a lot of them are going to come default with either this theme or the 2014 theme we just looked at. So point being, you want to stand out and you want to look different than all those other WordPressers starting up and more impressive and that's why we're gonna get ourselves a new theme if you remember before we're gonna use the Vantage theme before we go ahead and start designing I want to do a few housekeeping things to make sure our site runs smoothly and our experience goes smoothly so follow along and we'll get to the designing soon First off, I want to change our password. And to do that, we can go to the Users tab on the left navigation. Go to Users, and then All Users. Open up the user that you created. And then just scroll down. And let's write in a new password that will be easier to remember. perfect before I update my profile I'm also going to choose a new admin color scheme coffee and then we can update profile next up I want to take you to settings settings is where the general settings and the writing settings and the reading and so on go on it's really not where you design the look of your blog but it is important for controlling some very basic things so let's just click on settings and it takes us to general settings. Here we can change the title of the site, which I'm going to call business website. And then it's important to change the tagline because that's a very generic and boring tagline. All right, moving down, you have the option to add a www to your site. I'm not going to, but if you want to do this to your WordPress website, 
just make sure that you do it to both the WordPress address and the site address. All right. This is the email that will be used for a lot of purposes, like a contact form or for WordPress emailing you to update your site. So make sure you have your preferred email there. And then just click Save Changes. Next up, I'm going to go to Plugins. Plugins is where the extensions to WordPress exist. WordPress comes with a lot of built-in features, but over the years, people have built more features for WordPress and those come in the form of plugins. Your blog will need some plugins. It doesn't need all the plugins, but in general, plugins help you do things like maybe add an image slider or change the way that your post editor looks or add a Facebook like button or a tweet button. That can all be done with plugins. So in plugins, I want to activate our spam protector, which is called Akismet that will stop spam comments from getting through and I'm gonna activate hello dolly that's just a cute plugin from the founder of WordPress that puts a nice quote up here in the upper right alright while we're here I wanna delete jetpack and I wanna delete the mojo marketplace alright so I'm just gonna flat out delete them the jetpack is something that lets you use features from wordpress.com which I don't want to do I don't want to go back in time and Mojo Marketplace is basically just a little area that tries to sell you themes and I don't want to be sold to and I don't want to buy their themes so we can delete them but first we actually have to deactivate them deactivate and deactivate all right now we should be able to delete them yes very nice all right I want to take you back to the dashboard and that does it for our housekeeping on your dashboard you'll see some fun links that are useful for really new beginners but you have your guide here so you don't need to make use of these beginner links um, you can also find those on the left you can get to your posts or on the upper navigation you can write a new post right there or add a page so I wouldn't pay too much attention to the dashboard links right here Quick draft is just a way to quickly publish a post. The at a glance statistics are pretty cool. It's just a quick way of knowing how many posts and comments and pages you have. So we can just keep those at the top right here. All right, let's check out our business website. We still have the 2015 theme up. So why don't we go ahead and install our new theme called Vantage. To do that, let's go back to the dashboard and then go to Appearance and Themes. And then we have to click Add New. Because Vantage is a recommended theme from WordPress, we can search it and install it inline. So some themes need to be downloaded via zip files from websites. You'll actually have to download them and they'll go to your desktop. And then from your desktop, you can put them onto the site by clicking upload theme but Vantage should be in the WordPress theme search feature alright you can see just by typing in some words lots of themes will come up that you can search from but we know what we want so we can install Vantage alright that was quick activate and then once we do that we can see when we visit the site that it already looks way different and it already has much more of a more of a website flavor to it which is pretty cool alright so that's how Vantage looks by default that's pretty cool so now we have actually gone through one 
two, three, and four. We just installed our free theme. All right, so now it's time to customize the theme and set up some content. And this is really where the fun begins. So I hope you'll stick with us and I hope you'll set up this site just as we do because we're gonna learn a lot about WordPress content and how to populate a site with WordPress content. All right, well, what should we do first? I think we should just go back to the dashboard and I think we should set up that image slider. I think we should do that. So right away when you install a new theme like Vantage, the options in appearance will have shifted. You will probably have more options in appearance. So things like widgets and menus, those come standard. Those are always going to be here as is editor. But now we have some interesting new settings to play with like theme settings, homepage, and more. So let's check out the theme settings. All right, that's pretty neat. And no matter what theme you chose, just by playing around, you're going to find little hidden gems and things that you need to install and things that are free, stuff like that. As a rule of thumb, I would avoid any buttons that say um, upgrade to premium because, um, especially with this theme, it's really robust and capable and you don't need to spend any money on a, a premium or a paid theme. So we want to click on home now and the home page is where we can set up our slider. I think that would be a good thing to do first. Alright, so home page slider. It says this theme supports meta slider. Install it for a responsive sliders. All right, so let's install it because it's recommended. That was super quick. So what we're doing is installing a slider plugin, a slider plugin, which, like we said before, is an addition to our site and will make it do more. All right. So now not only do we have theme settings and home page, but we have meta slider. So let's check that out. If we click on meta slider, we can then click create your first slideshow. And this is going to decide what shows up on the home page slider. So it's going to um, replace this demo slider right here, which is awesome. All right. Once we're in here, we can add a slide. And I actually have a few images um, designated for our slider already. So I'm going to upload them to WordPress. This is really cool. It opens up an image uploader. And we can click Upload Files and then Select Files. All right. And then I want to grab Metropolis, Red Sky, and Rainbow and then click open. Doing this will bring the images from our desktop to the website. And then once we're here, we can actually put them in the slider or in a blog post or a page or wherever we want. Let's add to slider. And then we now have three slides. Three slides. That is awesome. So there are some settings on the right that we'll want to play with and I'm just going to walk you through them briefly. I know that my images are a certain width. They are 1200 by 800 pixels. All right, pixels are just how we measure things on the web, you know, instead of inches, it's pixels. And then I know that I want the slides to stretch 100% of the screen and center align and I want a standard crop. Crop is just what part of the image gets cut off. All right, and the rest of this stuff, I'm just gonna leave the same. And then I'm going to save. <clears throat> so I forgot one important step, which is to name our slider, which we can do by changing new slider to something like home slider. All right, to get the slider on the website and have it look really nice, 
we have to go back to theme settings but before we go to theme settings I'm actually gonna cut our height a little bit theme settings alright and then we can choose our slider that we just created it will show up automatically and save settings alright so let's see what we just did and now the images that I wanted are right here on the home page sometimes you have to bring your mouse away from the slider for it to move if you are hovering over then it won't change slides alright there we go now that we've made our slider why don't we create a few pages and then we can put them in a navigation menu right here above the slider so I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and I'm just gonna go to pages once we're here we can delete our sample page by clicking trash now let's just add some new pages the first page that I like to add is an about page and I have some content written out for this about page so I'm just gonna pull it in just a little about blurb that I wrote in advance and I'm just going to paste that in uh, right here you'll see a visual tab and a text tab now visual will make this look a lot like Microsoft Word you can see all the features here are pretty similar like bold, italic, etc, etc. As you use WordPress more you might choose the text editor a little more. It just shows you a little more of what's going on um, but there is a little code in here so up to you. Just what I prefer. Our about page needs an image so I'm gonna click add media and then we can upload another file just like we did for the slider except for this image is going to be bunny tour alright that's the fourth image we put on the website I'm gonna keep these settings the same because I want it floating on the left and I want a medium size but those are there to play around with as you choose and then when you when we insert the image it just comes in you can see visual obviously looks a little bit more more pleasing and you know a little bit easier to interpret alright I'm going to publish this page just click publish and now let's take a look alright so now I have my about page that's pretty easy wasn't it some content and an image and we've created our very first page pretty proud alright so let's make um, let's make one more page and I'm gonna call this page contact us and I'm just gonna leave this blank and then show you how to set up a contact form in a little bit you can see here one little detail every page has a permalink which is just the link to the post so if you copy this whole thing it would just take you right to the post or the page that you created well I guess that didn't work for some reason but um, there we go so that permalink is just the words right here and some of the WordPress SEO gurus and search engine experts will tell you to keep this portion really simple contact us and I agree I think you should choose really simple descriptive words right here so just a little SEO tip as you go forward alright now that we have a couple pages made why don't we go and put them in a menu so we can go to appearance and then I'll show you the menu section alright here we are in appearance menus it's another area to explore in your WordPress website to set up a menu you actually have to create a menu so I know it looks like we already have a menu but this isn't a real menu this is just WordPress putting in some pages that it thinks we might want so we actually have to create the menu and to do that we need a name 
and then we need to click create menu once you do that there are a few tabs in here already but you can pull in more on the left like if about wasn't here say it was removed you just checkbox it right here and then you can add to menu once a tab is in the menu we can arrange the order that it will appear on the site we also need to select menu settings and theme locations otherwise this new menu won't show up at all so this option for primary menu is the ideal location and we can save menu now if we refresh the site we'll see that the menu that we just created is in our navigation looking perfect I want to quickly get rid of the call me maybe now because that's not very funny and it's definitely not very 2015 so to do that I'm gonna go back to our settings and I'm actually gonna to have to go to theme settings sorry about that and then logo alright so so if you want to put your phone number on the home page for your business so that your customers could call you that's how to do it and there we go there's our phone number alright moving in top to bottom fashion as we design our new website we now have our navigation and the slider and we're gonna leave the logo aside for now and create that later and let's move on and let's create featured icons to tell people what our site is all about so this section right here to edit that we gotta go back to our appearance area and now we're gonna check out home page so let's explore the home page home page is telling us that this theme is compatible with site origins powerful drag and drop builder it's a new plugin it's free and I like this green button a lot it's looking cool and clickable so I'm gonna just click it alright we have now upgraded our site with another tool we'll just activate this tool which is a page builder page builder page builder is something a lot of themes that I've seen don't have and it's gonna make designing your home page a lot more convenient and give you more options so I'm kinda kinda pleased here I'm kinda proud that we can use it here Vantage is uh, it's a really powerful theme and it's a really beginner friendly theme so page builder is just one way that it achieves that beginner friendly nature alright let's go to home page again and here we are in page builder the featured icons are called circle icons and we can change what they have in them we can change the icon and this text and the links just by editing these three boxes alright so I should also note that you can add new new items here from the page builder now um, I can already hear a few of you commenting saying well my theme doesn't have page builder where's page builder page builder comes with vantage theme but it might not come with other themes it is a custom tool and your theme you choose will have custom tools or it won't and that's just life on WordPress so if you chose vantage you can now use this awesome page builder you can use any one of these widgets try out new widgets put them in a bundle try the recommended widgets a widget by the way is a item on a site it's just like a it's just a thing really and we'll we'll understand widgets more as we create them which we're gonna do right now so I just wanna edit circle icon number one and I have some text for that icon just a little pre-written text so I'm gonna call this one world's number one CMS paste in our text and then I want our icon to be the desktop that looks right alright done we can save home page and let's see what we just changed so keep your focus on this first icon whoa that was weird 
everything disappeared. But I know what happened. Our custom homepage got turned off by mistake. So making sure our custom homepage is turned on because we want to use it, we just changed what this first featured icon says. That's pretty cool. We're using the world's number one CMS. And let's go ahead and change these to tell a little bit more about our website. All right, cool. I'm going to refresh. And our featured icons are looking just as they should, just from our, our original website. So try to pick icons and text that explain what your website's about. And above all, just have fun. All right, I'm just going to keep designing the website in a top to bottom fashion. So follow along. Let's go back to our page builder and I want to change the Vantage headline. I want this to say really quickly what our demo is all about. Alright, these two areas are looking perfect. Now why don't we learn how to put our video onto the home page right here. So to do that we need to hop back over to the page builder again and I want to delete the post loop. I don't want blog posts right there. Instead, I just want a text, arbitrary text or HTML. These are, in my opinion, the most useful widget because they let you paste any code. And I'll show you how to get, get some code right now without even writing it. All right. So we're going to pop over to YouTube, which is kind of meta if you're watching this video on YouTube. And once we're in here, I just want to get one of my videos. And to quote unquote get the video, I'm going to click share. And then we can embed. We want the embed code because that's how you put it on a website. You copy the embed code and then you come back to the site and you paste it into a text editor. All right, just like that. Just this code. We don't have to write any of it. And then we can click done and save. By doing that, our video should appear. And there it is, looking great. So you might guess that text widgets are useful for not only YouTube code, but also Facebook code, Twitter code, or whatever sort of share buttons or videos you want to put onto a site. I'm going to put a little text by the video now not a big deal just a little more text I wrote and that should do it so our site is really coming together and we're actually almost done but we still have to do a few things like put a copyright at the bottom and then we have to create a logo and design it and then we have to set up a sidebar all right, let's go ahead and quickly put a copyright on our site to scare people away from copying our content. I'm the kind of guy that always forgets to do this, so let's just get it out of the way. I'm going to actually go to the copyright symbol page. and just copy it right from Wikipedia and then to change this copyright area I'll show you a little trick we can go to appearance editor so I'm showing you a new section now editor is actually where all the code to the website lives so you only want to make very selective edits only if you really know what you're doing which we do thankfully and you can click on footer and then in footer we're just gonna edit where it says a all the way to where it says theme so I'm just gonna paste in our copyright symbol and make sure not to delete any of those apostrophes and you can put in your brand name there I call myself dear blogger productions and then I like writing all rights reserved update file and that should give us a nice professional copyright message 
for the whole world to see. There we go. All right, let's go to the about page and let's take a look at our sidebar. Why don't we go ahead and clean this up because there's really nothing impressive to look at. And as a rule of thumb, I like deleting things that don't show off content in a positive way. So maybe if you had archives from September and October all the way back until 2010, it would be cool to show it off. Or categories, you know, same thing, but we don't. To delete those things, we go back to our dashboard and then Appearance Widgets. So I'm showing you yet another area. And this area really can look confusing at first. I know because I was just helping my mom sort through her sidebar. But what we have here are available widgets to put in the sidebar and then widgets that are active, meaning they're in the sidebar already. So these are exactly what you see in the sidebar in the live setting. See recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and the same order right here. We can reorder them just like we would our menu or we can just delete which is what I want to do. I just want to open everything but the search tab and just click delete. Delete, delete, and then we can delete meta. Meta might be useful if you want a link here to your login or a link to the logout, but I don't think we need that. And then we can see the changes we made just by refreshing, and we now just have our search bar looking a lot cleaner. I guess now would be a good time to show you how to put an ad in the sidebar because I did say that I would show you how to become a Google AdSense publisher. So why don't we go ahead and do that. I'm going to walk you over to my AdSense. And once we're here, we can go ahead and grab any old ad. So we can see the ads that I've created and the status which is thankfully active and then the sizes and I want one that's 300 by 250 pixels. We can just get the code, click once to highlight, copy that code and now we're just going to drag it back to the site. So how do we put that in the sidebar? Well, we make use of one of our generic text widgets, it's the recommended method. So we can add a new widget and then once it populates in our sidebar it will open automatically and we can paste in the code from Google. So again no coding needed and we can just save. Alright let's see what that looks like. Let's refresh again and we get that yellow box that might show up for a while, a while longer if you're being accepted or you know hopefully reviewed and then accepted to AdSense. But yeah, that's uh, the really simple method of putting an ad in. I like putting them in the sidebar and in this area above the fold. So above the fold means in the upper 50% of the site. And that way when someone lands on the site, even if they're not interested enough to scroll down, we'll still get the, the revenue for them seeing our ad because it's above the 50% mark. As an optimization tip, Ads in your upper right corner of the sidebar will perform really well. Another way to make them perform is to put them in the post right here. So instead of an image there, you could put an ad. Those are generally two really good, really good spots for clicks and for views and for maximizing your ad earnings. Another good spot is right here where that um, phone number is. So let me know if you have any questions on positioning your ads. And I should mention that depending on the type of site you have, you can earn anywhere from $1 to $20 per click. So this is just a demo website. I don't think I'll earn much more than a dollar per click. But on a website about something like auto insurance or finance or maybe computer gadgets, something where the potential customer would click to a new page and then make a significantly hefty purchase, 
and uh, buy something worth a lot of money then those ads are gonna gonna generate more revenue for you um, depending on what sort of content they come from alright now before we put the finishing touches on our site with a custom designed logo I want to learn and I want to show you how to set up a contact form on our contact page the point of the form is pretty simple it's to hide our email you've surely seen contact forms before and it's just a really impersonal way to get contacted I personally like uh, the email method I think it's really awesome when a company displays their email or a brand it just makes you feel like a little closer to them but there are understandable reasons for not wanting to do that so the workaround is a contact form and we're gonna learn how to make one right now head back to the dashboard and then let's go add a new plugin so let's hover over plugins and then we can click add new these are several available plugins right now and there are thousands but we're just gonna look for contact form 7 contact form 7 is the most popular contact form in WordPress by a long shot at 23 million downloads we can install it for free activate of course and now we get yet another new addition to our WordPress dashboard we are even more powerful with the contact area so let's click that and then let's edit the contact form one which is a standard form that the plugin creates for us pretty nice of them alright so there are a lot of different ways to edit this contact form um, but I'm just going to show you some basic changes you can make and this will help you make your form prettier and it will help you get messages that you want so first off in message body I'm just going to arrange how these things come and I'm just gonna put name and email alright and I'm just gonna get rid of subject so what I've done here is customize the message body that will get sent to you in your email you're gonna get a name and an email and then a message body alright that looks better over here on the left this is the email that it will get sent to alright this is my email from is right there and then subject so I'm gonna change the subject line just so I know that this is from our WordPress website I'm just gonna say from the site from the WP site how about that and then up here this is dictating exactly how the form looks and don't worry if this looks kinda confusing because it it always does it first we can delete subject and then we can um, make this a little more simple for people usually an asterisk is a good way of denoting required so we don't have to put the whole word there and that looks pretty good so let's save our form to insert this form into your WordPress website just copy this exact code pull it back to the contact page and then go ahead and paste it in and then update alright there we go that was really easy and now you have a customized contact form that your audience can use to send you messages or greetings or product questions and you don't even need to show off your email to anyone alright guys it is finally time to make our custom logo for the website now I do recommend getting a graphic designer if you can afford it and only if you can afford it but I included this logo part in the tutorial because I want to show you just how far we can get without paying a dime and I think you'll be amazed at how much we can do on a logo all for free 
All right, so I want to give you this knowledge, and I want you to know that if you're getting a designer, then they should really do a good job. The first step in getting our logo going is actually just getting an icon. We need an image to base the logo around. And to get that icon, let's go to dryicons.com. Once we're here, I want to do a search for flower. I think including nature is always positive when you can in your logos and your designs. And I have an icon picked out that we can build our logo around. All right, here it is. It's just called home. And to get this icon, we just need to click the red download button. This icon is free with one caveat, and the caveat is you have to include a backlink anywhere on your site to either this page or to the Jai Icons homepage. Give it a little SEO juice from your site, which is not a big deal at all for a free icon. Alright, once we download our icon, just click it in your downloads to unzip it. Once you do that, the next step is to go to our online logo editor, which is called Pixlr.com. Once we're on Pixlr, we can scroll down to where it says Pixlr Editor, and then we can launch the web app. And what Pixlr is, is a Photoshop alternative. So it doesn't have all the tools of Photoshop, and we don't need, thankfully, to know Photoshop to make this logo, but you'll be surprised at how much you can do just within Pixlr by, by clicking around a few buttons. So let's open that icon by clicking Open Image, and then in our downloads, we'll have the icon for Home, Grace Home. It is a PNG, and I want the 128 by 128 Home icon. All right, let's give ourselves a little more room. Once you've opened up your icon, it is now time to make our canvas bigger because we want to include some text to the right. To do that, click on image and then canvas size. Place the image in the lower, rather the middle left-hand side, and then adjust the width of the image to 700 pixels. The width of the canvas, rather. All right, now we're going to write out three different words, and we're going to put them each to the right of this icon image. So it'll all make sense in a second, but just bear with me while we type out three words. First is just word. We're going to make it 50 point font. And I already know the um, font we want, so I just have to find that and it's called American Typewriter. Now let's click OK. Doing that again, we can write the word press, and it inherits the styles from Word. And once again, beauty. There we go. Now why don't we go ahead and line up the words in a neat order. All right, so I'm going to click on Word and click on the cursor. And doing that lets me drag the the word. All right, and I want it to rest right over here about center with the image. Next up is press. Let's do the same thing with press. I want to leave press a little more space. And next up is beauty. I created three words instead of just one string of words so that we can style each one of these words individually. To style one of these words individually, make sure you have it selected in layers. Click back on the A and then just click the word itself. Now I want the style on press and the reason I want that is because nowadays graphic designers are using this interesting technique with three word strings where the middle word is accentuated. It'll either be bold and these two words will be thin or it'll be a different color or maybe italics but it is a current style that's going around. It's a trend 
and I think it's kind of nice. It it really adds a subtle way of breaking up a string of words. So using this style, I want to make press bold. I want it to stand out a little bit. And that means we're going to have to move it again. So let's just move press so it's nicely centered with word and beauty. All right, that looks better. And I also want to add a little more style to press. Keeping this layer selected, I want to go to layer and then layer styles. All right. Now I want to click on outer glow. And I want to create a red outer glow so we can open up a color wheel. That's what this is. It's the color wheel selector. And click on red and then make sure our circle is right around a nice red nice rich red color and we can click OK alright now I want to change the way this border appears and I'm gonna bring our hardness right to the middle give it a little more opacity there we go and we can adjust the size accordingly as well. I'm going to go with something right around between 5 and 10 sounds good. 8 looks good. Alright, so now I'm just going to click um, OK. And it looks like beauty might need to be brought down a little bit. Oh, but we're still on press. Alright, now our words are all on the same plane and we have a custom logo. All right, so it's not the best logo ever, but it achieves the uh, objective. It gets the point across. I want someone to know that this is a WordPress site focused on beauty, focused on ease of use, and it's a good place to call your WordPress home. All right, the final step is just to crop the entire logo so that it doesn't take up too much space on the site. Perfect. Just did that using the crop tool and now I will save our image because it's ready to go on the website. We'll use the portable networks graphic file extension PNG and we'll click OK. Save it. Back on the website it's really easy to set up the logo. Just go to appearance and then theme settings again and then once you're in theme settings click on logo click choose image upload again select find the logo click set logo and then click save settings now let's refresh and now we've replaced that text logo with a beautiful custom design logo all for free Alright everyone, sadly that brings us to the end of our WordPress website tutorial for 2015. I want to say thanks so much for watching, whether you watched 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or all the way through the entire thing, because I really enjoy making these videos for you. Thanks so much. I want to remind you of the HostGator coupon codes we used. Those are coffee money to get 1 cent hosting or take 30 off to get 30% off your entire order. Those are the greatest discounts available now and using them will give me a small affiliate credit from HostGator just for recommending their services which really helps me keep going and keep making free videos on YouTube and on the web for everyone. Lastly, as I said before, if you have any questions at all related to WordPress, blogging, or websites, just post a comment on YouTube. I have those synced with my email so I usually see them within about 5 or 10 minutes and if I'm online I'll respond right away. Thanks so much for watching, make sure to rate the video, share it, comment, you know, all that good stuff because it really helps and I'll see you next time. Okay, see you guys.